Hey Church family, it's Jordan. I'm here with our Monday morning devotional video. Uh, we're going to go to Ephesians 4 if you want to start uh, turning that way or open your app to that uh, particular chapter and book. Uh, I, before we jump in, I, I want to just encourage all of us to be a people of prayer. I think one of the things that really demonstrates that we are God's people is when we go to God with our needs and our requests and with our praise uh, through prayer. So uh, I hope uh, many of you were able to join us last night at 6, uh, and I would encourage you on Sunday mornings at 8.30 behind the cafe, we have a smaller prayer group just to help uh, prepare the church uh, through prayer for uh, what God is going to do. It's been super encouraging and a big blessing to me to be able to participate in that time of prayer. Uh, and so if, if you are just feeling like you need to hear from God, you feel like you need to be a part of what God is doing, you want to see God moving in your life, uh, prayer is a great beginning point, and frankly, maybe the beginning point. A part of how we know that we are God's people is that we turn our concerns and our cares and our anxieties and our needs over to God in prayer, and we also receive from him. We listen to what he is saying to us, what encouragements he would have for us, what correction he would have for us, uh, and prayer is powerful. It is uh, a way for us to uh, be connected to our creator and, and the God of the universe. So, uh, join us 8.30 Sunday mornings. Um, every uh, last Sunday of the month, we have prayer time as well uh, on at 6 o'clock usually. So just to really, really encourage that. Um, all right, let's uh, look back real quickly at some of the Christianese terms we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Hopefully you'll start to see a bit of a progression as to how we got here and it would make some sense for you. Part of what I'm trying to do is to develop some meaning and some substance and some meat on the bone for some terms which I think we can sometimes get a little flippant about as we go through scripture, as we get more accustomed to the words the Bible uses and the words we hear in church, I think we start to somehow diminish uh, the value of some of the things that are, are being communicated. So over the last several weeks, I've, I'm trying to communicate um, uh, really the, the significance of sin. Uh, I started out by talking about uh, what sin is and some of the words that the Bible uses to describe sin and why sin is such a big deal. Uh, we then talked about God's righteousness and God's holiness. Again, I don't think you can properly understand the significance of sin without properly understanding the goodness of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, because ultimately sin is bad, but it's made worse by the fact that what we are doing is an affront to a perfect holy, loving, righteous God. Um, and, and that sort of widens the gap, if you will, between uh, uh, us as uh, sinners, people who were once enslaved to sin, and the perfect, holy uh, God who is all-powerful um, and who is the creator of the universe. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about another word which I think will hopefully help develop uh, some of our uh, thoughts around the significance of sin and the consequence of sin. So if you go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, and we're going to read uh, from there for a couple of verses, and then we'll chat a little bit about how I think this helps us get a bigger picture of sin and its consequence, and also begins to help tell the tale of why we need a Savior. All right, turn with me there. Um, reading now. Uh, now this I say and testify in the Lord. This is Paul writing uh, to his church. Uh, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their mind. Now, he's not specifically calling out Gentiles as a uh, ethnic group. Uh, he is referring to Gentiles as a sort of unbelieving people, uh, people who are not God's people. Um, they are darkened in their understanding, and here's the word of the day, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy, to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned in Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Again, so the last couple of weeks, we talked about true righteousness and holiness as, as being something that is, is demonstrated and defined by God. And uh, Paul is developing this thought in uh, Ephesians 4, 17 through 24, uh, that helps you understand what the alternative is, and that is us in sin. Uh, we are people who are alienated 
from God. Alienation is the word that I'm using uh, for our Christianese teaching today. And, and this idea of alienation uh, means that we are separated from or foreign to uh, God and to God's nature as righteous and holy. Um, and again, this is something that is pretty significant. If you think about an alien living in a land, in a country to which they do not belong, typically that alien can exist and they may exist under the authority of that uh, king or government that is ruling in that space. But typically when you are an alien, you lose the benefits of being a citizen, uh, of being someone who can call that place home and call that place your own. And so uh, we are aliens. We are alienated from uh, God's righteousness and holiness, from relationship with God through our sin. In no way does our alienation actually establish independent power and authority. We are still living in God's uh, 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 determined time, uh, his boundaries. He is uh, set for each of us, our lifespan, and he is ultimately in control. But we are living in a way that we do not receive the benefits of being in right standing before God. Paul talks about the consequence of this, and he says um, that it ultimately results in us uh, giving ourselves over to sensuality, to greedy practices for every kind of impurity. Um, he talks about that this being a choice, that we have um, uh, darkened our understanding. Uh, we become ignorant because of the hardness of our heart. Uh, we have chosen futility in our way of, of acting when we are outside of Christ, when we are sinners. Um, and again, I, I really want to highlight um, this sort of idea that if God is the ultimate good, if God is love, if God is kind, if he is generous, if he is always just, if he is righteous, if he is holy and he's devoted to himself, if his holiness leads to him uh, expressing love for the creation that he created in his image, you don't want to be an alien. You don't want to be alienated from that. So much of the evil that we experience in this world today is a consequence of people choosing to uh, live outside of the lordship and the kingship of Christ Jesus. Uh, when we all come to that point of bowing our knee and we proclaim that Jesus is Lord, uh, there will be no more sin. There will be no more alienation for those of us who are followers and believers in Christ Jesus, who have been saved through his work on the cross. And what a powerful and amazing experience that is going to be for those of us who are saved. For those who have chosen to continue in that, that darkening of mind and that callousness and that hardness of heart um, in their sin, they are going to experience what it means to forego God's goodness and God's righteousness and God's authority um, over their lives for an eternity. They will understand uh, what it means to be cast into the outer, outer darkness. Um, I, I kind of as an imagery, you think about some of the, the scriptures that talk about how the people who are, are cast out into this outer darkness um, as a consequence of for being uh, unbelievers of, of who Jesus Christ is. And uh, being in darkness means that you are without light. And I think part of the experience of hell, part of the experience of an eternity in hell that leads to this weeping and this gnashing of teeth is going to be realizing what God's goodness is and was and who he was and what he has done throughout human history to show his love for us and then to forego that for eternity. That is true alienation. That happens as a consequence of unbelief in Jesus Christ, of, of not acknowledging him as your savior. That is hell. Um, that is why we as believers are called to missions. We are called to uh, profess and testify to the goodness of Christ and what he has done, uh, to testify to who God is, because we want no one to experience that kind of alienation for eternity. Instead, we want them to be adopted as citizens and heirs of Christ and of God um, in the eternity that is heaven, where we really get to experience fully without any sort of um, a, a veil over our eyes, who God is and that goodness. So that's my, my uh, devotional for us today. Um, consider um, uh, sin and consider the significance of sin and consider how sin separates us and makes us aliens um, and so that we cannot experience the full blessing of what it means to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And consider then um, how and who uh, you would uh, go and witness to? Who would you share life-giving, life-saving words with so they can experience that same thing? I, I think that's a big call for all of us. Uh, listen to the Holy Spirit as you spend some time in prayer. Uh, be, be mindful, uh, be attentive as you go out throughout your week, um, as you interact with other people, 
uh, consider how God might use you uh, to bring someone into uh, the citizenship of heaven uh, through uh, the adoption we receive in Christ Jesus. I love you all. I hope that's encouraging for you. Uh, have a wonderful week uh, this week and look forward to being with you on Thursday for midweek um, and again next weekend together on our Sunday services. Bye everyone.